now from WATN, it's Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. Welcome to Local 24 This Week, the place on Memphis television where you get the real story behind the big story. And what a week it's been. I'm your host, Otis Sanford, and today for Richard Ransom, thanks for joining us. Here's what's on our agenda for today. First, Alexander's decision. Tennessee's senior Senator Lamar Alexander's late-night decision to vote against witnesses in the impeachment trial of President Trump was a defining moment, not just for the trial, but for Alexander's legacy. We'll examine the ramifications of Alexander's vote and look ahead to those lining up to replace him in the Senate. Next, Amazon's expansion. The internet retail giant broke ground this week on a high-tech fulfillment center in Raleigh that promises to create 1,000 jobs paying at least $15 an hour and transform that area of Memphis. We'll discuss the impact of the move on the Memphis economy. Plus, we'll also delve into possible cost overruns for that massive renovation project at the convention center downtown. But first, I'll go one-on-one -on -one with Shelby County Sheriff Floyd Bonner, who's here today. Sheriff Bonner, welcome. Thank, Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having have, me. Good to have you. Good to have you. Let me dive right in because I have a lot of questions <laughs> that I want to get to you today. Uh, let me start uh, with an issue that has come back up into the news recently, and that is uh, the rash of uh, interstate and roadway shootings that have happened in this community. Um, you've been around law enforcement for a long time, Sheriff yes, Bonner. Why do you think this keeps happening? Well, Otis, I think it's just a sign of the times. You know, the legislators just a few years ago allowed weapons in cars. Mm -hmm. You know, you can carry a gun in your car, an mm -hmm. extension of your home. And so uh, with, with that and the fact that what we're finding, that some of these things are occurring, they start in the neighborhood and then they accelerate to the uh, interstate. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just the way we are now, you mm -hmm. know, when I, when I laugh about, you know, when I was a kid, you know, we fought it out. You mm -hmm. know, I'm sure you mm -hmm. did. Right. These kids now are carrying weapons mm -hmm. now. And so it makes our jobs a lot more difficult because of the weapons that's in your cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just so, we're so hair triggered, mm -hmm. quick to pull the trigger, if you will. Well, uh, MPD Deputy Chief Sam Hines made the pretty much the same comment that you just did, and it came out as, to me, as being sort of critical of the legislature in passing that law back in 2014 that allows people to carry guns in their cars with or without a permit. Um, uh, 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 do you think that that should be looked at again in light of what's going on, especially in Memphis? I wish it would be looked at again. You know, I talked to my counterparts up in Knox County, the sheriff up there. They're having interstate shootings as well. Mm -hmm. I think the legislators did not take into account the big four, what I call the big four. Yeah. Memphis, Knoxville, Knox, Knoxville, ship, uh, Memphis, Knoxville, Nashville and Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't think that they took those cities, you know, those large metropolitans in, in, in thinking about us, yeah, really, you really. know, when they did that. Yeah, right. And so, I, te I tend to agree with yeah. you on that. Uh, uh, and I, I assume that uh, the Sheriff's Department, along with uh, MPD and state police, you all are sort of patrolling the interstates, uh, or at least the areas that, that <clears throat> you're responsible for, say, the east end of uh, Bill Morris Parkway, maybe. Right, are you all right. out there doing we that? We are well? out. Uh, I talked to with Director Rollins mm -hmm. just yesterday, as okay. a matter of fact, and we're putting together a, a task force, if okay. you will, to get back out on the interstate. I know he's called for the Tennessee see Highway Patrol also to come back mm -hmm. and help. And uh, we've got to stop this. Yeah. We, we've got to catch some people that are doing this mm -hmm. and uh, and put them in jail. I got you. Okay. Let me switch gears for a little bit. And I just want to get your uh, position on this issue. Uh, State Senator Ramesh Ackberry uh, last week uh, sponsored a bill uh, that would legalize marijuana. I think this goes beyond the medical marijuana that's already been out there. Um, as a law enforcement official in this town and actually the top county law enforcement uh, officer, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm not for that. I absolutely. I've spent uh, this coming into my 40th year in law enforcement and over the course of my career at the sheriff's office, I spent 13 and a half years in narcotics. 
So I fought this fight for a long time, and I just don't think this is good for our state, for our community, legalizing marijuana. Now, we have it in other states now. I, I understand, but if you go back and look at those states and talk to law enforcement in those states, mm -hmm. it's just a number of problems that they're having, and, uh, and I think it's only going to make things worse. You can argue the point about a gateway drug yeah. to harder drugs or whatever, but I think... Um, with the poverty level here in, mm -hmm. in Shelby County, mm -hmm. uh, most jobs want you to take a drug test, mm -hmm. and so now we're going to allow people to smoke marijuana legally. Yeah. And so, what is that going to do to our economy in yeah. Shelby County? Okay. So I think there's a lot okay. of things involved. In okay. That. Well, let me shift gears here and talk uh, also about denexation. Sure. You know, the city is giving up uh, some areas uh, out in the east part of the county that your department will now be responsible right. for um, uh, for patrolling. Um, I think you had said at one point that you needed about 50 to 51 uh, additional uh, deputies to do that job. Uh, I think the MPD was doing it though with, a, with fewer, fewer than that. Um, why would you need more? And then talk a little generally about how you're preparing for that. Well, we based our numbers on the call volume that MPD had taken there. Now, when we asked for 51, we're asking for extra detectives, more DUI officers, more traffic officers. I so see, okay. that's all a part of the acts. Mm -hmm. Uh, what will actually go out on the street is, in patrolling in those areas is the number is definitely lower than mm -hmm. 51. But we want to be able to serve those citizens. There's about 12,000 residents that we'll be taking in mm -hmm. uh, doing the annexation. We want to be able to service them. And, and so we made the acts of 51. So we'll talk and work with the county commissioner, county mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone says that public safety is number one. Mm -hmm. So we, we're I'm concerned about the budget problem, but we've been responsible, Otis, over the last few years in giving money back to the county commission. Mm -hmm. So we hope that they would take that into consideration, that we have been good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars, and that uh, we will be responsible even in this. But even when the annexation comes, we will be prepared. We, our staff talks about it all the time. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do in case we don't get to 51 and, you know, we play with the numbers and, and everything, but I can assure you and the citizens, we'll be ready. Okay, good. Uh, we only have a couple more minutes left. Let me ask you about the ongoing issue. It hadn't been talked about much lately, um, but the issue of the sheriff's department or the jail um, notifying federal authorities whenever you are arrest uh, undocumented immigrants. Um, again, that hadn't been talked about all that much lately. Where, where, where does the Sheriff's Department stand on that now? And has there been anything recently that has popped up as a result of that? Well, our position is where we've been all along. And what the, what the procedure is, is that if you're arrested and you come into our jail, no matter who it is, and one of the questions that we're going to ask you is, is where were you born? Mm -hmm. If you say anywhere outside the United States, we're going to notify ICE that Otis Sanford says he was born in Montreal, Canada. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to ICE to decide okay. if they, if they want to come see Otis Sanford or but, not. But the, but the original uh, issue had to be they weren't in a hurry to get over there, and they were asking you to detain them in the jail right, right. until they could get there, even well, if it was beyond their their date to get out. Right, right. And, and we we don't do it. We we've had uh, a county attorney's opinion on it. We've still stood on that opinion mm -hmm. now for about three to four years that we don't hold for ICE. Mm -hmm. uh, we notify them that you know that this person is getting ready to get out of jail. Right. And, they don't get there by the time they bond out, then they're released. They're going out. I mean, they're you're doing your yeah. due diligence when you're doing that, right? Right. Okay. Right. All right. All right. That's good. All right. Chef Bonner, I, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for we having me. We want you to me. come back again pretty soon. Anytime. Anytime. And uh, I'll be seeing you around. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have our roundtable panel to discuss other issues here on Local 24 this week. Call me. Mike Montese, and you can tell the insurance company, hasta la vista, baby. Call 526 I work hard, and I want my money to work hard, too. So I use my Freedom Unlimited cards. 
even when I'm spending, I'm earning 1.5% cash back on everything I buy. Earn on my favorite suit. Ah, got it. Earning on that eclair. Don't touch it. Don't touch it yet. Let me get the big one. Nope. This one? Nope. This one? No. Let me get them all. Let me get them all. Just the basics. Can you double bag this right here? Earn 1.5% cash back on everything you buy with Freedom Unlimited. Can you also tell me what it is? Chase, make more of what's yours. After an injury, it's almost always the other side's insurance company, not the individual that we go up against. That's why size matters. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Attention, do you owe the IRS more than $10,000? If so, listen to this important message about the IRS Fresh Start Program, a special IRS program that can potentially save you thousands by qualifying. But acceptance into the Fresh Start Program is not automatic, so we will connect you with a tax professional for a free consultation. Once you're accepted, the IRS must stop all harassing collection activities. Call 800-354-9044 now to find out if you may qualify for the IRS's Fresh Start Program. Call 800-354-9044. See the difference with news that matters to you. Watch Richard Ransom weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. Only on Local 24 News. The Mid-South is rich with the history of contributions of African Americans. To me, uh, she's a humanitarian, great humanitarian. From the story of Ida B. Wells to the history of black medical schools in the Mid-South. Have you ever heard about Hannibal Medical College or the University of West Tennessee? No, I didn't. And from segregated school bus protests to the rise and fall of stacks. Untold Stories, Tuesday at 6.30 on Local 24. You're watching Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. Welcome back to Local 24 This Week. I'm Otis Sanford. Uh, Richard Ransom is off today. And I want to introduce uh, my panel for the next two segments. Tawan Stout Mitchell is a former Memphis City Councilwoman and is now a political consultant in Memphis. And Sam Hardiman is a political and city hall reporter uh, for the Commercial Appeal. Welcome to you both. Um, we have a lot to talk about related yeah. to Lamar Alexander. Um, everybody was talking about his decision on Thursday night in which he, in which he decided that uh, he was not going to vote to, to call witnesses or have any documents uh, in the trial. And of course, as we take this uh, on, uh, on a Friday afternoon, um, the final arguments basically are being held. But we want to talk about Alexander's uh, decision uh, and what we think this does for his legacy uh, going forward. And I feel it's necessary that uh, I read at least some excerpts from his 467-word statement that he released Thursday night. Um, and he says here, uh, there is no need for more evidence to prove that the president asked Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and his son Hunter. The House managers have proved this with what they call a mountain of overwhelming evidence. It was inappropriate for the president to ask a foreign leader to investigate his political opponent and to withhold United States aid to encourage that investigation. The question then is not whether the president did it, but whether you, the United States Senate or the American people should decide what to do about what he did. I believe that the Constitution provides that the people should make that decision in the presidential election that begins an hour on Monday. Um, Duane, I'm going to come to you mm. first. Um, what, what's your reaction uh, to uh, Senator Alexander's decision here? I was not surprised. Uh, if you look at his catalog of votes, you know when there's been a crunch. He was there with Kavanaugh. He was there uh, against the... Um, he was there for the federal judges. Mm -hmm. He was there for the <coughs> Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. uh, not Secretary of State, Secretary of State as well as the Education Secretary. Right, and the he boss. Was a, yeah, and he was a former university president and education and, 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 educa secretary. and education leader but he supported this education secretary who knows nothing about education but so I was not surprised now I am disappointed because he's always been seen as fair-minded although the votes have not shown that to me he certainly will not go down in history as a Fred Thompson um, or Howard Baker yeah. Uh, and that's unfortunate. And it seems like he really wants the best of both worlds. He wants to say, yeah, he's guilty, but that, that inappropriate behavior is not enough to throw him out of office. Mm -hmm. But he's guilty. Mm -hmm. And I don't know 
what you have to do if, if, if you can conspire with other countries for to change an election yeah. and not be thrown out of office. Sam, I want to bring you into this uh, to bring a little perspective to this issue. And also, um, what do you think this means for Lamar Alexander's legacy uh, once he leaves office at the end of this year? So I, I think that he has definitely cemented his place in a paragraph in this episode in the history book here. You know, he was maybe going to be that fourth vote to call witnesses. Whether the calling of witnesses, had it gone down, would have changed the outcome of President Trump being, you know, the likelihood of him not being convicted in the Senate mm -hmm. is, is slim to none. But at the same time, I think he stuck true to some of what he has been, which is he's been willing to buck his own party. In his statement, which was long and, and where he reasoned out why he was doing what he was doing, he was, you know, taking a, a different tack than most Republicans who have insisted, for the most part, that the phone call that the president had and, and the decision to withhold the aid from Ukraine, there was nothing wrong with that. The, Lamar Alexander called it inappropriate. He just doesn't believe it rises to the level of removing someone from office. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, he, he was true to himself there, I think. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I'll go, I, go ahead, I, I do want to say that I, I, I really think to withhold evidence and to withhold witnesses is to withhold the truth. Yeah. Even if you felt it didn't ar arrive to the occasion to remove him from office, for the American people to seek all of the truth so you can make a better assessment at the poll. Which is what he wants to have. He wants yeah. the American if you people want us to, to make, make... I can't make an assessment without the witnesses and without the documents. Yeah. And nobody goes to court anymore, even for a speeding ticket, without a police officer as a witness and a ticket as a document. I hear you. <laughs> okay. We got to move on uh, because he is... Uh, retiring at the end of the year. Uh, so there is a campaign that's going to be going on this year uh, for his replacement. Uh, the two major Republican candidates, uh, Bill Haggerty, uh, who is a former U.S. ambassador to Japan, uh, and also Manny Sethi, uh, who is um, a, a trauma surgeon, um, their campaign fundraising for the fourth quarter uh, of 2019 showed that Bill Haggerty had raised about $1.5 million uh, in the fourth quarter. Manny Sethi at about $500,000. Um, we do not have the amount for the leading Democrat uh, in the race, James Mackler. Um, what, uh, uh, where do you see that race heading right now uh, as you look at this race going forward, Sam? So where I see that race right now is I think Bill Haggerty is going to be a tough guy to beat in the Republican primary and probably a tough guy to beat in the general election. Um, he just had Donald Trump Jr. come to Gallatin, I believe it was this week, mm -hmm. to campaign for him. He has fully embraced the president. And if Tennessee voters, the, the whole of Tennessee, sticks with Trump the way they did in 2016, Bill Haggerty probably is a safe bet to be our next U.S. Senator. Uh, we have about 30 seconds left. Agree. On how you I see agree. about that? I agree. I mean, this state, uh, other than Shelby County and a little part of Haywood County, this state is gone Trump crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, that's about that's putting a pretty good stamp on that's it. That's my uh, but, assessment. So, so I take it there, 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 there will be absolutely no ramifications mm. then from uh, Alexander's decision or any uproar from Democrats that will make a difference here. Okay, all right. Well, we'll take another break, and when we come back, we'll talk about a couple of local issues uh, that happened this week. So you're watching Local 24 this week. In 1924, Roy and Irene Sanford established a business serving the entire Mid-South. Almost 100 years later, my parents, Marilyn and Burl Gary, still continue to express the importance of customer assistance. My name is Mark Gary. My sister Leslie and I are proud third-generation family members who continue to serve the Mid-South with the quality products and services that our family has established. As proud Memphians, my family welcomes you to visit Hollywood Furniture, and we look forward to assisting you with the needs of your home. Are you struggling financially? What if you could earn money while helping to save lives? At Plasma Biological Services, you can earn up to $500 in your first month of donating plasma. Every donor is required to provide a valid ID along with proof of social security number. The process is similar to donating blood and is a very safe and comfortable procedure. Help yourself while helping others. 
Only you can provide life-saving medications for others. Please call us today at one of our locations to find out more on donating plasma. She is my hero. A teacher, an early civil rights leader, and a journalist. She's a humanitarian. She's a great humanitarian. Her legacy still lives on in the hearts and lives of those she influenced. A woman that was really willing to sacrifice everything. Join Local 24 News reporter Rebecca Butcher as she takes us on the journey of a civil rights crusader for justice. Wednesday on Local 24 News at 6. Women can inspire women across the United States. To embrace each other, lift each other up, and hold each other accountable when it comes to heart health. That's why we're here inviting you on Friday, February 7th, to stand with us. For National Wear Red Day. As we work to change the course of history. And save the lives of our mothers, daughters, sisters, and friends. We got this. 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 Go red. Go red. Go red. Go red. Go red for women. You're watching Local 24 This Week with Richard Ransom. Welcome back to Local 24 This Week. We have some pretty positive economic news that happened this yeah. past week in Memphis. Uh, Amazon, which uh, I have called this economic juggernaut that's running around right now, uh, they broke ground on a new fulfillment center that I think is like a $200 million uh, facility out in Raleigh. Uh, that will, um, I think, hire uh, and employ about 1,000 employees, paying at least $15 an hour. Um, Duane, as a uh, former city council person who was always interested in the economic well-being of this community, how do you see oh, that? Oh, I think that's nothing but good news for Memphis. It's good news for that district in that area. Um, and it's troubling news probably for FedEx. Hmm. I, I think um, as Amazon grows, Amazon hurts FedEx, and a lot of good people will see they have opportunities at Amazon and FedEx, and I think they are in a war right now. I really do, and I'm, I'm a little afraid of that, but I'm happy that Memphis is growing. Well, but, but FedEx is still the big guy in town. It's the and, big guy in town. Yeah. But trust me, when you look, when you read uh, uh, economic data from um, Bloomberg News and uh, FedEx and Amazon are also competitors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Sam, they seem how to be on, see that? And they seem to be on different trajectories as companies That's too. True. I mean, mm -hmm. Amazon's had this meteoric rise. You know, there was a headline today, it's Friday, in the uh, New York Times today that says Amazon defies gravity. I mean, mm -hmm. businesses typically don't get this big and, you know, continue to go up. You know, they used to call it when you diversify diversification mm -hmm. in the industry. So, you know, one of the interesting things to me about this story, and there may be some state tax incentives for this project, but there has not been a pilot request no. for this project yet. So. When you look at all the industrial development that has happened in the city of Memphis and Shelby County that has been incentivized, mm -hmm. and now we're having a $200 million project, 1,000 jobs at $15 an hour, that isn't coming. And Amazon got a lot of incentives for its first two mm -hmm. facilities here in, in Memphis. This is really interesting. I think me. there will be or there may be uh, some state incentives that right. might come along with this project. But you're right, I hadn't heard anything about any local Memphis or Shelby County tax breaks or pilots or anything like that. Um, and a start of $15 an hour really speaks to helping our city with poverty. Yeah. Yeah. Sam, I want to go to another topic before we close today. Uh, you had a story this past week about the Renaissance Convention Center. I have to remember to say that I'm, I've been around here long enough to know about the Cook Convention Center and Ellis Auditorium of all things. Yeah, I love that too. Uh, but uh, you had a story that, that sort of put a little caution out there that there could be some cost overruns to that. Uh, uh, tell our audience a little bit about what you found out. Sure. There. So this week in the Commercial Appeal, uh, I wrote a story that um, the city of Memphis, uh, when they embarked on this $200 million renovation of the convention center, baked into the project about $7 million, $6.6 .6 million in reserves. And that means for surprises to come along in the project, for any cost overruns. And so as of this week, about $117,000 of that was left. So they've pretty much gone through it. Now, some of that is not entirely finalized, so the city could have some more wiggle room, but the city is watching this very closely. They have not put any general fund dollars into this project. 
And so they're relying on hotel motel tax mostly to fund this thing. And that is a, a tax source that has a lot of other uses in this community. It's the same with the downtown TDZ funds. Mm -hmm. So the city is very watchful and, and could have to cut small pieces of this project as time goes on, as it gets you know, towards the end of the year when it's scheduled to be complete. And, and it's, it's interesting to me how watchful and wary particularly city COO Doug McGowan is about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Tawan is someone, again, who was in city government for many years um, and was concerned about cost overruns for projects. Um, and not that there will definitely be overruns here, but there is a likelihood that it could be. How do you see this plan well, out? As long as it stays within the framework of maybe 10 percent, 15 percent more, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. I can remember when the convention center's last renovation cost us double. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we have uh, a financial team is, that is not is going to make sure that that does not happen mm -hmm. again. Okay. So, uh, you know, I don't want to see any cost for overruns. And really, I'll be honest with you, I'm scared when people say change orders because I usually think people have lowballed their figures in order to get more money once the project starts and then you caught and you got to pay it. Right. But I think this financial team and the engineer's office will keep an eye on that because for a long time we've complained about those things. Okay. Well, we have to leave, have to leave it there. It's, it's going to open, scheduled to open this fall. This fall. All right. We'll take another break and we'll have some final thoughts here on Local 24 this week. Has the insurance company offered you a ridiculous settlement for your car wreck injury? Just say no. It was a bad car wreck. My leg was broken and I was out of work for three months. I called Mike Montesi. Mike came out swinging and got me respect fast. He got me money for my medical bills, lost wages, for my pain and suffering, and car repairs. Montesi got me way more than what I expected and without the hassle of going to court. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-780-3074, 1-800-780-3074. Women can inspire women across the United States to embrace each other, lift each other up, and hold each other accountable when it comes to heart health. That's why we're here inviting you on Friday, February 7th, to stand with us for National Wear Red Day. As we work to change the course of history and save the lives of our mothers, daughters, sisters, and friends, we got this. 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 Go red. Go red. Go red. Go red. Go red for women. Sickle cell anemia affects thousands in the Mid-South and millions worldwide. This is the first molecular disease and we can't do anything to help it. But researchers at St. Jude may have found a way to potentially fix sickle cell. It's basically like a small molecular scissor and the cell can repair the DNA to make uh, particular changes. It's called CRISPR and it can be used to edit DNA. Local 24 News anchor Kelsey Cairns consults the experts in Dr. DNA. Monday on Local 24 News at 10. To come in on our show, drop an email to rransom at localmemphis.com. I want to thank our panelists today, Sam Hardeman, Tawan Stout Mitchell, and also thank uh, the Sheriff Floyd Bonner for dropping by today. Thank you for joining us.